Welcome to another time of kingdom living and learning to live as a child of the king, which is what you are if Christ is in your heart. If you've accepted what Jesus did for you, you now are his sibling and God is your father. And you've been given all power and authority, just like Jesus. So let's dig in. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for your mercy and your truth. Open our eyes and our ears and our hearts to receive your truth. <clears throat> Bless us and keep us and <clears throat> enlighten us, Lord. Help us to live out a life of compassion, just like Jesus. Amen. Okay. So tonight, our message that the Holy Spirit put on my heart is about compassion. So, <clears throat> let's start off in the Word, and we're going to go to Psalms, chapter 86. And if you found it, say amen. If you need some more time, say, wait a minute. Amen. Okay. Let's, verse 15. But thou, O Lord, art a God of full. Let me start over. But thou, O Lord, art a God full of compassion and gracious, long suffering, and plenteous in mercy and truth. So this. Scripture right here is telling us that God Himself is a God of compassion. Not just that He's that way some of the time, but He's full of compassion. And He's gracious. And He's long suffering. He, you know, He's patient. He's willing to take a whole bunch of junk from us and still be there with compassion. And He has plenty of mercy and truth for each one of us. Amen. Let's move over a little bit in Psalms to chapter 111. If you found it, say amen. If you haven't yet, say, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Once you get to 111, we're going to go to verse 4. Everybody there now? Yes. Okay, verse 4. He hath made his wonderful works to be remembered. You're one of his wonderful works. I'm one of his wonderful works. He made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of of compassion. Again, he's full of compassion. Now let's move over to the New Testament. Let's go to Matthew. And let's go to chapter 9. And we're going to go to verse 36. Okay. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. He was moved by compassion. God was so full of love, so full of just longing and feeling their pain that it caused him to move and to do something. All right, let's move over just a little bit to Matthew 14, verse 14. And it says, And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them 
and healed their sick. He healed them. Now let's move farther on, almost to the very back of the Bible, to 1 Peter. And we're going to go to chapter 3. All right, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. And here we go. Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love as brethren. Be pitiful. Be courteous. Now let's pause. Finally, be ye all of one mind. If we keep our minds on Christ and we stay conformed to Him, doing what He would have us to do, having the mind of Christ, we will be of one mind, won't we? Mm -hmm. Wanting what is best, not what is best for me, but for the kingdom of God. Having compassion one of another. Having compassion for each other. Now some of us don't quite understand the word compassion. So I got out my old dictionary. I love this one. I typically use it online now. But this is the best. So I'm going to show it to you. And I highly recommend it. This is American Dictionary of English Language by Noah Webster. It's 1828. This was before they took out morality and God's word from the dictionary. And Noah Webster was a man who could quote the entire body, chap, entire Bible, sorry, <clears throat> chapter, and verse, book, the whole bit. So let's look at compassion, okay? It says, compassion, a suffering with another. So feeling, having such love for another individual that you can feel their pain, their grief, their sorrow. Painful sympathy, a sensation of sorrow excited by the distress of another. A sensation of sorrow which is created by us feeling another person's stress. Pity. Passion is a mix. Passion compounded of love and sorrow. So you have so much love for them that you feel their sorrow. You feel their pain. You feel their grief. And this was God. And this is Jesus. And this should also be us. That we should be moved by compassion just like Jesus Let's look at that first Peter one more time. First Peter chapter 3 verse 8. And it says, finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another. If we don't have that godly compassion, if we're not showing each other love, what good is it? Moving over to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity, love, compassion. I am become a sounding brass 
or a tinkling symbol. And though I have prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I'm nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it profit me nothing. Charity suffereth long, and is kind. Charity envieth not. It's not jealous. It doesn't want what somebody else has. Charity vaunteth not itself. It's not puffed up. Doth not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own. Is not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things endureth all things. Charity never faileth. But whether there be prophecy, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, has it come in you? Are you now perfect in him? Then that which is in part shall be done away with. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child, and I thought as a child. But when I became a man, that means fully grown. When I became and had a renewed mind, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly. Then, when we are renewed, face to face, now I know in part, but then shall I know even also as I am known. And now abideth. If Christ is in you, now abideth. Faith, hope, charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity. Do you have charity for each person in your life? Are you moved by compassion toward them? Are you setting the captives free? Are you loving the ones that you see that are miserable? <coughs> and your heart aches for them. And you're just moved to do something. We should be moved every day as we see those that are in need. Because what we have in us will set them free from demons, afflictions, sickness, everything. Live in compassion. And now abideth faith, hope, charity these three. But the greatest of these is charity. Live in love. Be moved by compassion. Father, I just pray over each person that's here tonight and over those that are listening via the internet. Father, stir us up, Lord. Reveal to us anything in us that is not of you. And Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ, desire to change that. To put away all things of the old man and be renewed in our mind and everywhere else and surrender everything to you to be Lord over. Mind, body, spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.